Hello, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here, and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. And I am joined, as always, by my favorite reader, Claire. Thanks, Kirstra. I'm Claire. I moderate our As the Page Turns group here at the library, and also our historical group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And today we have a very special episode. This is our summer lovin' episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, Claire and I have decided to talk about romance because that is a genre that neither one of us read much of or talk about very much. Yes, delving into the province, you know, the romance pool mm -hmm. here. Yes, stretching ourselves a little bit, right? Dipping our toes in some unfamiliar waters. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to kind of break out of your comfort zone it is. every now and then. That's absolutely true. Um, so we're going to talk about some romances that we've read, and we hope that you will um, let us know if you've read any of these or what romances you would recommend. Yes. All right. Do you want to kick us off, Claire? Sure. All the right. first one I'm going to do is In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. And this one I actually read because I subbed for Kirstra at As the Page Turns, and this was the In monthly pints and choice. Pints, oh, pints and pros. Pros. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm off to a great start. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this book, I, I was kind of surprised mm -hmm. at how I liked it. I don't really know what I was thinking, you know. I just thought mm -hmm. it would be a light, fluffy read, but it was a pleasant, light, fluffy read. So... Um, what's it about? Well, we have a type A Manhattan lawyer named Danny Cohen, and she is asked a question at a very important interview, like, where are you going to be in five mm -hmm. years? So it's kind of that whole premise rides through this book. I hate that so, question, yes. by the way. Well, she has a meticulously <laughs> crafted answer. Of course. She is ready. Um, later, after nailing her interview, she goes out to dinner with her boyfriend at a very exclusive Manhattan restaurant. And of course he pops the question, you know, they've been dating of forever. Course. It's time. This is all part of Danny's plan. So um, she accepts the ring. She and David are now engaged. That night she goes to sleep and she has a vision of herself with a different man, uh -oh. a different ring, uh -oh. five years in the future. What? Oh yeah, yeah. And unlike most people that would just wake up and say, ha, huh, a dream, you know, not Danny, man. She's no. hanging on to this thing uh -oh. for dear life. So um, she can't shake what happened. Mm -hmm. She goes to a therapist, has one visit, and I think, you know, bags a therapist, and kind of gets on with her life until... Four years into the future, her best friend from childhood introduces her to her her new beau, who is uh oh none other. Let me guess. Yeah, <laughs> the man in the dream. So um, now she's really in for some some problems. Mm -hmm. But um, what I liked, I don't want to go into like who ends up with who, sure. why, what, where. Um, it's not your typical Hallmark movie. Like, okay. she doesn't really end up, the one thing I will say, it doesn't really end the way you think it might end. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes into more, like, what different types of love are. Ah. Because she has this good friend. They both have had not so close relationships with their real parents. Mm -hmm. So they've had to rely on each other a lot more. And they've been each other's you know, comfort zone mm -hmm. and just source of, you know, I don't know, stability. Found family. Yeah, family. So that was the one thing I liked is they mm -hmm. kind of go into what are the different types of love? Is it romantic love? You know, is what Danny and her ideal boyfriend really, is it love? Is mm -hmm. it just like, you know, good on paper. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's just all kinds of questions. Um, what I didn't like <laughs> is just that Danny seemed so perfect. She was almost a caricature to me. I Got mean, there it. was nothing this woman couldn't do, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I found her a bit unbelievable. But, um, and also her friend was just such a free spirit and so different than Danny, you know, but yet mm -hmm. they were best friends. And, and her boyfriend, David, who was just totally too good to be true and did not deserve what happens to him. But, you know, I digress. But anyway, um, 
I kind of liked it. Yeah, I thought it would be a great read for the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like romance, I'd highly give it a give it a try. All In right. five years, by Rebecca Searle. Nice, so. very cool. Um, my first book, I decided if we're going to do romance, I'm just going for big air. I'm going for the big name. So I started with Julia Quinn because of Miss Bridgerton. So some of you may have watched the Bridgerton series on Netflix. I will confess that I have watched both seasons. Oh, you have? I have. So I think I'm the only person in America that hasn't watched this, but... It's light and fluffy, and it's good for, like, a summer binge. And I was like, you know what? Let me read one of the books that this series came from. So the series follows this family of, like, I don't know, eight or nine kids, and each book in the series is a different one of the kids finding their, their person, right? And this is actually a prequel. So this is of the mother's generation. Um, So our main character is Billy Bridgerton, uh, Billy short for Sibylla. Um, Billy is a bit of a tomboy. She um, loves living in the country. She helps run the estate that her family lives on. Um, Their closest neighbors are the Rokesbys, who have three sons, Um, one a little bit older than Billy and two right around her same age. And she's great friends with the two that are her same age and has always just kind of assumed that she will wind up married to one of them, Mm -hmm. right? Um, So the book starts with Billy being stuck on the roof of a barn where she has gone to try and rescue a cat. Um, So she tries to save the cat and they both get stuck. And who should come by to see her in her plight, but George Rokesby, who is the oldest Rokesby son, with whom she does not really get along. She's mortified that he has found her there. So it sets up one of these kind of classic romance novel tropes, which is the two people who start out hating each other, fall in love, fall in love, grow yeah. to love each other, and end up together. And telling you that they end up together is not giving anything away. Because the romance books are all about the happily ever after. That's right. Right? Um, So we know from the very beginning that these two are going to end up together. And it's just um, following them, figuring out how they're going to, you know, realize their feelings and come together. Um, So if you've watched the Bridgerton series, um, you will be very familiar with kind of the beats of the book. Um, Again, there's not a lot of surprises here, but to my mind, that's one of the things that you go to these books for. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what's going to happen. You want that hit of happy ever after. Right. And you get that here. So classic historical fiction or historical romance. Um, Very cute. And, you know, it's not badly written or anything like it's well written um it's just you know not gonna surprise you i think those are available on hoopla too if i'm not mistaken most if not all of them are yeah so that's another yeah plus absolutely like their e-readers or yeah and this would be just an absolute perfect by the pool book Mm -hmm. for sure awesome yeah all right so the second one Um, I haven't read in a while, but it is very hot right now. I think it is like one of the two best-selling books. It's called The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. Um, I swear every day people come in looking for that book. Oh, yeah. I have five copies, and they're all out, so hence hence the photo. Mm -hmm. Um, She also had another series of books called To All the Boys Mm -hmm. I've Loved Before. I believe that one was on Netflix. Absolutely. Um, The Summer I Turned Pretty, I believe, is on Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's somewhere. Yes. So um, if you read this book, then you will be in with all the young people you know, because this is like super hot right now. (laughs) Um, It's the first book in a trilogy. Okay. And... It is kind of a classic in that it is a love triangle type of book. Okay. So what we have is we have the main character is Belly, um, short for Isabella. 
you know, if you can that get is beyond unfortunate. that. Isn't that though? I'm thinking to myself, Jenny Han, could you have not picked a better name? I, I feel like I don't know a single teenager in the world who would consent Want to, to let herself called. be called Belly. Okay. But carry on. Carry on. <laughs> um, so every summer she goes to a beach house with her, her mom and her brother um, to her mom's best friend, and they, uh, whose name is Susanna. And, of course, Susanna has two sons, Conrad and Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. So basically being the youngest and being a girl, all she's ever really wanted was to fit in with the boys um, and be able to get to do what they do. Mm-hmm. But it has n- never come to fruition Except now, Belly has turned 16. Mm -hmm. Belly is now attractive. Okay. Um, So they finally begin to see her as something more than that little irritating girl. Mm -hmm. So um, the other thing is she's probably been in love with the oldest boy, Conrad, since she's been about 12. (laughs) Fair enough. Yeah. So... Now she's, you know, hoping that this summer will be different. It will be everything she ever thought it would be. Um, But a lot of things start to happen in this book. It's not just about Belly and, you know, which boy she, Mm -hmm. you know, ends up with. And, of course, she's attracted to different ones at different times. Of course. Because that's what the love triangle is all about. Well, sure. So, um, you know, there's divorce going on. Mm -hmm. There's serious illness. um, The experience of being a friend death, all kinds of things. So in between that, you have all of these kids trying to deal with these issues, plus trying to figure out their feelings. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes she likes Jeremiah because he's more, you know, fun and, you know, easygoing, whereas Conrad is very brooding and keeps everything inside. But, you know, Mm -hmm. so what I liked, the the love triangle will keep you turning the pages. I mean, Mm -hmm. you just can't read this book fast enough um it's relatively clean by today's standards too okay. so if you know your teen or somebody is looking or you just are a kind of person that likes a cleaner romance mm-hmm. this will fit the bill um the whole characters this coming of age scenes you can just uh, picture the beach and the pool and you mm-hmm. know it kind of takes you back um i think one of the biggest sellers on etsy right now is belly's like shell necklace that she wears <laughs> um it's a very quick read and if you mm-hmm. like the story and like the characters you've got two more books to go nice. so um it the what i didn't like is it's not really realistic that this girl i always find fault with teen romances in this way and that the first person you fall in love with is basically the only person you will love in your entire life. And how many people do you really know that that's happened to? I know like two people who are married to the person that they started dating in high school. Most people don't even remember the person's name that they (laughs) first loved in high school. 100%. Yeah. But um, so that, you know, this this is not going to be like high literature. (laughs) This is just fun, relaxing, entertaining read. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, that was my big thing is there was literally no one else that she thought about besides Conrad and Jeremiah. (laughs) No one. No one. In the three books. Eh. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, well. So, The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Hahn. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very cool. Well, that one sounds cute. Yeah. I don't know if I'll pick it up, but it sounds cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. My next one I also read a while ago. Um, And I don't remember why because again this is not my typical fare but it is um the bromance book club by lisa k adams um (laughs) so this is a contemporary romance and it is set in nashville Um, our main character is gavin scott he's a baseball player he is married to thea and they have two small daughters Um, and they are going through a pretty rough patch in their marriage. And towards the beginning of the book, there's kind of a blow up um, and Thea asks for a divorce, um, which Gavin does not want to give her. He wants to try and find a way to save their marriage and work things out. Um, So he is sort of whisked away by one of his teammates um, who tells him, you know, we're gonna help you, we've got a plan to help you fix your marriage. And that plan turns out to be the Bromance Book Club, which is a secret book club 
made up of mostly these baseball players and some other like prominent men from Nashville um, who read romance novels as manuals <laughs> for relationships. Well, this sounds more like a, a comedy than a romance. Well, there is quite a bit of comedy in it. Um, so the the book <laughs> that they give him to read is called Courting the Countess. Oh. And one of the things, so one of the things that I really liked about this book is um, it is very smart about romance novels. So they're going through and they're dissecting like the tropes that you find in these stories. Um, and some of it is, you know, just a frame to get the men to think from another point of view, okay. right? So that's all. And like to think about what a woman is looking for from a relationship. Like this is a light bulb moment, right? <laughs> so we are assuming a rather um, kind of dim view of the emotional intelligence of these men to start. So that's something. But the book is pretty funny. Um, and they do, you know, there are big quoted passages from the romance books. So it does treat those books kind of very seriously, which is fun mm -hmm. to read about. Um, what I didn't love about this book and what I have a really hard time with most contemporary romance books is like there's always a conflict, right, in the in the romance novel be, that the characters have to get beyond. Um and in contemporary romances, I just want to scream at people to talk to each other well, or I go to therapy. Like, <laughs> none of this book would have happened if when this couple was having a rough patch, they said, you know, maybe we should get some help yeah. <laughs> and talk to a counselor. And then it would have all been so right. like... All of it would have been solved. Yeah. Um, and somehow, when you've got the historical ones, that doesn't bother me so much. I think probably because, you know, they didn't have therapists in Edwardian English. Well, plus, you, you know, know co communication was a bit more difficult. Absolutely. You know, you're delivering letters or going on yeah. personal visits versus picking up your phone, you know. Right. Actually calling someone. Right. Talking it out. Right. There's yeah. no there's no talking oh, it there's out. There's none of that. There's no talking it out. So um in the end, um, they do get back together. Marriage is saved. Um this is the first book in a series. I think there are at least two more books, and my guess is having not read them, that they follow other members of, of the book bromance club. book yeah. club okay right so not this particular yeah. family um but it was cute yeah it sounds cute and it was funny yeah um but go to therapy <laughs> go to therapy <laughs> all right <laughs> my last one um it's one that I, I got an uh, advanced reader copy for. Uh, it's called Book Lovers by Emily Henry. And this one is now out, so mm -hmm. I can talk about it. Um, I actually really like this one. Yeah? And what I liked about it is so often you have that trope of, you know, girl doesn't get along with boy or whatever mm -hmm. and of sparks fly and you know mm -hmm. they'll end up together in the end but mm -hmm. these two were just so funny about it and they had such great banter um oh i'm a sucker for good banter oh me too love me some banter yeah <laughs> so anyway what it's about nora stevens is our main character her life is books she is um she's not an editor she's a person oh gosh i have my notes here somewhere but okay she works in the publishing industry good enough for me so she represents authors she's an agent yes she's an agent thank you thank you kirster for saving that's me. why i'm here so, <laughs> so she has this business lunch with um an editor that she is trying to match up with one of her her authors and it's pretty much a disaster he's very 
into people being punctual. He has, you know, he's highly sought after. So minutes before she goes into this luncheon, she is dumped unceremoniously by phone outside the restaurant by her then Brutal. current boyfriend. Yes. Brutal. Um, and the way she summarizes her life is she is the the person in the Hallmark movie that does get dumped, you know, like when, when the boyfriend goes to the farm and falls in love with the farmer's daughter, she's the one in the city left behind, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so she has a sister who is happily married, um, has several children, two children and one on the way. So sister almost decides she's going to pull an intervention. Mm -hmm. So she sees um, Nora just kind of leading her life and she is alone you know she's not been lucky in love and she thinks i'm gonna fix this so knowing how much her sister loves checks list checklist she decides to make a 12 point plan visit a town in north carolina that is the setting of one of her favorite romance novels and she has things on there like wear flannel shirts <laughs> go skinny dipping in natural bodies of water have two dates with local, you know, people. Um, so it, it just is funny. You imagine this woman. It's the Hallmark who, movie checklist. Yes, the Hallmark movie checklist. But this is a woman that doesn't like to even sleep at her boyfriend's home because she has a skincare routine that she is adamant about keeping. I mean, it's just she's a stitch. And then, of course, you go to the town and who is there. It's got to be the editor. The editor that she had the disastrous mm -hmm. luncheon with. And come to find out, he's there because his parents, he's from that town. His father has had a heart attack. So he is a good guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's trying to help his mom save the bookstore. But they go back and forth and have, you know, of course, a series of close misses, of almost course. romances, you know. Um, there's an ex-fiance running about the town. Of course. Of course, you know. Um, and then there is a bit of a surprise as to why they really went. And I don't want to give too much okay. away because I was surprised. Um, but it, it ends well, not exactly like you think, not mm -hmm. exactly tied up in that bow like mm -hmm. the Hallmark movie. And that was the one thing I really liked is I thought the main character stayed pretty true to herself. Okay. And worked out, you know, kind of a compromise situation. So. I liked it. I thought it was um, extremely funny. Lots of puns, lots mm -hmm. of banter. Um, I laughed out loud several times. Well, your description had me rolling yeah. just now. So, yeah. So, um, but the main character knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. So, um, I liked it. I have read another one by her that I didn't like, but this one and another book mm -hmm. are supposed to be pretty similar. So I might even try that one. Okay. I might even read another romance what? novel. Look at me go. Well, so, I, I think lovers. I'm going to have to put that one on my list Emily because Henry. it, it sounds good and yeah. funny and like a quick breezy read. Yeah. It's a yeah. great read for summer. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, um, my last one is, um, old book so this is um well it is now historical fiction at the time it was just fiction it is <laughs> north and south by elizabeth gaskell um elizabeth gaskell was a victorian writer in england um writing around the same time as charles dickens um in a lot of ways very similar to dickens so she wrote a lot of um most of her books were serials. Okay. So she was doing the same thing that Dickens was, was a chapter like each month in whatever literary magazine or however they did it. Um, and in fact, Dickens was um, her publisher for some of her books. So North and South is the story of Margaret Hale, um, who grew up in Hampshire in England, which is in the south of England, very kind of rural and bucolic and beautiful. Uh, her father is a minister who, towards the beginning of the book, has a crisis of faith and decides to uproot the family and move them to the other side of the country. So they move north to Milton, uh, which is an industrial town. And this is smack dab in the middle of the Industrial Revolution in England. So in 1854, we're talking uh, cotton mill towns. So everything is a cotton mill. Um, it's 
urban, it's, there's air pollution, it's dirty and crowded, and Margaret, like, shows up, I hate it, burn it all down, right? She's mad that she had to move, that everything's been uprooted, but here they are now in Milton. And she meets, while she is there, John Thornton, who is a self-made man who owns one of the mills and runs it. Um, he is... Um, self-educated and successful, but he doesn't have sort of the airs and graces that you get being a person of leisure, right? So these two get thrown together, um, and most of the book is them being kind of attracted to each other, but also kind of repelled by what the other person represents. Okay. So the North is grimy and dark and dirty, and the South is, like, lazy, and people don't do anything. Like, up in the North, they're at least earning their living and, like, captains of industry and doing their thing, and in the South, they just lay around all day and walk through meadows and read books, I guess, you know? So this could have been just as easily called Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kind of the same, similar setup. Um, there's also a big theme of, um, like, workers' rights through there because this is sort of the time during the Industrial Revolution where you start seeing, um, with the factories, workers starting to try and organize and work for better conditions. So you do get a look at the conditions inside the mills, which are, spoiler alert, not great. Not great. Um, and Margaret immediately sort of um, takes on the local workers as sort of her charges, and she's, you know, bringing them baskets of food and taking care of them during strikes and all of this stuff. So there's a whole lot of back and forth um, to get to the happy ending at the ending. Um, this book was also made into a miniseries by the BBC. I was going to say, it's on BritBox. Okay. It used to be on Netflix. I don't know if it still is. Um, and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, John Armitage plays John, John Armitage? Robert Armitage? Oh, now I'm forgetting. Uh, plays John Thornton. He's fantastic. Um, and he's, you know, kind of the brooding Heath Cliffy yeah, yeah except a little less like ruffled shirty yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. and fewer like crying over graves and all of that business sorry I have a thing about Wuthering Heights I just can't but, <laughs> but yes sort of your brooding hero um and it's just fantastic so there's um it's kind of a thick book because it was a serial so she got paid by the word right, yeah. <laughs> um but the story is very sweet um how these two people kind of come together and make their peace with each other which is nice mm -hmm. um she also has another book wives and daughters which was also made into a mini series and that one is also fantastic so either one of those highly recommend both in print and on screen okay sounds good yeah all right. So we did it. Look at us. We talked about so many romance books. That's right. Six romance <laughs> Six books. Six romance books. Who would have thought? Probably no one. Yeah. So please do let us know if you have read any of these, if you have other books to recommend. Um, you know, Claire really liked book lovers. Does anyone have any similar books that they can recommend? Because that sounds right up my alley, too. Yeah. Um, but we'd love to hear what kind of romances you're reading. All right. Sounds good. And we are taking the rest of August off, so we will be back in the beginning of September. Sci-fi September. Sci-fi. I'm so excited. <laughs> and you're going to be Will Kirstra turn me. me to the dark side? <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you in September. Have a good one.